Hi everyone, welcome and thank you for your audience. We are going to talk about privacy and data protection requirements and their risks for cross-border data transfer. I hope you enjoy it. My name is Marison Souza. I'm co-founder of Maven, Truber, and the privacy startup Privacy Tools. I'm a software architect and blockchain developer. Since 2017, when the GDPR was being in its vacation legis period, I was used to working with blockchain solutions to collect consent from people to allow companies to perform their business. I live in Brazil and our data protection law was released at the end of 2018. And since then, we have noticed a trend in the world. Privacy is not that. According to Accenture, companies globally could incur $5.2 trillion in additional costs and lost revenue over the next five years due to insecurity risks. Privacy laws have never been as important as they are today. Now that data travels the world through borderless networks, over 130 jurisdictions now have data privacy laws as of January 2021. If you need to transfer personal data to another country, you need to check first your regulation about this transfer. And also, you need to check the target country regulations about the same business, of course. According to the Vironi's research, only 5% of the companies are properly protected. So cross-border data transfer is not simple, but what about my cloud? What about all my data? Well, not every piece of data is personal data. Let's see the difference. When we talk about personal data, we can uh, split the business data from the amount of data that can be connected to an identifiable person. So if you process the name, the email address, the document number, credit card, or other financial data, all these data are linked directly to a person. Even an IP address, a cookie, or a database table ID are considered personal data because it's possible for the company with the minimal efforts to identify a person in its database or even in other linked databases. So, you understood that in the most basic terms, personal data is any piece of information that someone can use to identify with some degree of accuracy a living person. Well, but there is a subcategory of personal data that requires heightened data protection measures due to its sensitive and personal nature. In some jurisdictions, this type of personal data may be described as sensitive personal data. Controllers or data owners typically must satisfy certain requirements before processing special categories of data, such as obtaining data subject consent. But what kind of personal data is considered sensitive and is subject to specific process conditions? Personal data revealing, uh, well, personal data revealing racial or ethnic origin, political opinions, religious or philosophical beliefs, trade union membership, genetic data, biometric data processed solely to identify a human being, health related data, data concerning personal sex life or sex orientation. Sensitive personal data should be held separately from another personal data preferably in a locker drawer or feeding cabinet. As with personal data generally, it should only be kept on laptops or portable devices if the file has been encrypted or pseudonymized. The privacy laws are not intended to protect companies, but to protect the people and how their data is processed by companies. If you transfer data to other countries, you must be sure that your data is subject 
won't miss any fundamental right offered by your applicable regulation. For example, in the European Union, data protection is a fundamental right set out in Article 8 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights. If your customer asks for you to remove its data, do you have all the procedures and integrations to do that with automation? Are you able to require the same operation from the vendors in other countries? Will they respect your rules? That's why you need to take care of transferring personal data. Some countries have sectoral coverage. I mean, different industries or trades in the country have their data privacy laws. Other countries have omnibus coverage with at least one national data protection law in addition to provincial or sectoral regulations. For example, Canada has 28 federal, provincial or territorial statutes governing data protection and privacy in the country. China's most recent privacy law took effect in May 2018. The law contains provision related to transparency, personal rights over data and consent. In the US, there is no single overreaching data privacy legislation. Instead, the country follows a sectoral approach to data privacy, relying on a patchwork of sector-specific laws and state laws, like the CCPA in the California state. A common misconception about the GDPR is that all organizations need to seek consent to process personal data. In fact, consent is only one of six lawful grounds for processing personal data and the strict rules regarding lawful consent requests makes it a, the least preferable option. However, there will be times when consent is the most suitable basis and organizations need to be aware that they need, ex they need explicit consent to process sensitive personal data. In Brazil, we have the LGPD with at least 10 lawful grounds for processing personal data. With so many rules, it's hard to be sure you are compliant. And while these protection laws are sometimes good news for those who have data stored or transferred online, it's not so good for those who have to navigate this mess of inconsistent regulations. It's not enough to evaluate the data that you process and establish appropriate data transfer procedures. You should plan how to manage change in the business and continue to evaluate the implications of the GDPR or other regulations on a regular basis with a frequency based on the amount of change experienced in your organization. Like all regulations, you will need to monitor the privacy ones itself for changes and expansions. Under the General Data Protection Regulation, all the member states of the European Union have uniform protection of personal data and personal privacy. This also applies in the European Economic Area countries. Personal data can thus be transmitted freely within this without any restrictions. Outside the European Union or the European Economic Area, on the other hand, there are no general rules that provide equivalent protection. The General Data Protection Regulation, GDPR, therefore contains rules concerning under what conditions it's permitted to transfer personal data to countries outside. As the United States has no federal law, it's not a safe country to process personal data according to the GDPR. You need to find other legal basis to keep transferring personal data. Until July 2020, there was a framework called Privacy Shield, and one of its purposes was to enable US companies to more easily receive personal data from the European Union. Last year, 
the framework was revoked and a lot of US companies lost contracts because they could not prove their privacy policies and methods uh, in a high to be considered a safe place for processing European Union citizen data. Instead of Privacy Shield, though, European entities are working with the SCC, the Standard Contractor Clause. Actually, it's permitted to transfer personal data to countries outside the European Union under certain conditions. The first one, there is a decision from the European Commission that, for example, a certain country outside the European Union or the European Economic, Economic Area ensures an adequate level of protection. You have taken appropriate protection measures, for example, by the incorporate rules, BCR, or standard contractor rules, SCC. The BCR or binding corporate rules are rules that a group with companies in several different countries can draw up to define its processing of personal data. By the other hand, binding corporate rules must be approved, approved by the supervisory authority. Standard contract contractor clauses, the SCC, contain obligations for both data controllers wishing to transfer personal data to countries outside the European Union and data controllers or data processors who receive such data. The clauses also regulate other matters concerning the transfer, for example, the data subjects' rights and how disputes arising from the contract are to be settled. In the third option is, of course, the special situations and single cases that need to be approved by the national authority. If you do business in Asia, Australia, or South America, you will find regulations with a very similar criteria about transferring data outside the region. Some are more restrictive than others, so it can be uh, it can be a good pattern if you try to design a global approach for your business. The privacy laws are global. If you have a company in India, but you process personal data of an European citizen, you must follow the GDPR rules. You can be sure that if you don't follow the rules, you will need to pay fines. In December 2020, Twitter, a US-located company, needed to pay a GDPR fine of a half million dollars. It was the first cross-border GDPR fine in Ireland, or better, in the GDPR context. The European Commission can decide that a country has a sufficiently high level of protection and you may then transfer personal data there without any special license. The General Data Protection Regulation calls this as adequate level of protection. It can also apply to a certain territory or, uh, or uh, international organization or one or several sectors in a third country. In Poland, the Data Protection Authority imposed some administrative fines in cross-border proceedings. The fined company provides employment services in Poland and Germany, and a complaint against its actions was lodged by a German citizen because it processed his personal data for marketing purposes. In Germany, the German DPA criticized Office 365 from Microsoft because of the personal data being transferred to the US without authorization. In July 2019, the software was banned from some schools in Germany because of privacy concerns. And the reason is, was very specific. Uh, with the use of the Windows 10 operation system, a wealth of telemetry data is transmitted to Microsoft whose content has not been clarified. Such data is also transmitted when using OFFS. When the European Commission takes decisions concerning an adequate level of protection, 
they look, among other things, at the country's laws and international undertakings, what possibilities the data subject have for legal examination, and if the country respects human rights and fundamental freedoms. The European Commission also checks that there are independent supervisory authority that are responsible for ensuring that the data protection rules are complied with, the, with and that can help the data subject. Cyber attacks are increasingly serious risk for organizations, but many senior staff seem to believe that their organization won't be targeted. A report by IBM found that the average time to detect and contain a data breach is 279 days. The longer a breach goes unaddressed, the more data gets leaked and the larger the overall impact financial and otherwise. The same report found that by containing a breach is under 200 days, you can save 1 million in costs. Every day that, uh, that you detect a, a, the breach sooner will have a tangible effect on damage mitigation. Most breaches also go un unnoticed and don't raise any alarms until the damage they cause becomes visible with time. If you transfer data outside your region, you have additional challenges to take care when we talk about risks for privacy. So you can see how important it is to protect privacy and personal data in international business. If you don't control where your data is and how it's processed, you increase your risks. Let's take a look at some of them. The first one, risks for doing business. If you don't follow the privacy rules, you will find a lot of trouble to keep doing business the same way you always do. Large companies are demanding that vendors show that they are compliant. It's a challenge, especially for the small companies and startups that don't have data governance and mature compliance policies. If you have a data-driven business, probably you need to follow several privacy laws. Many startups obtain efficiency from the analysis and processing of big data, and their evaluation is calculated by the volume of people or the volume of personal data. And now they need to ensure that the personal data has been collected co correctly according to the global and local regulations. Many countries already have data protection laws and companies with a global ambition need to be aware of the applicable laws to, the, to be able to collect data from people in other countries, their fines, sanctions and limits, as well as rules for international transfer. If you have a GovTech or a company that sell services and products for government, we can see that tenders require that the personal data of the citizens stay in the country instead of transferring them abroad. It can be an infrastructure challenge for your company to keep several copies of your service in appliances over the world. And finally, uh, if you look funding for your business, funds, accelerators and angels are already demanding that startups have mechanisms for data protection. They know that a data leak can expose the entire investment. Not having a data protection program can reduce the company's valuation in an investment negotiation and generate red flags for the investors. I'd like to finish with a sentence that privacy is not a project, it's a journey it's a journey of transformation of the human being concerning how they deal with their information. The laws are only the means, not the assets. So, thank you so much.